On the Palais des Nations, almost forgotten by the world since Geneva lost the League of Nations, centre the hopes of mankind. Switzerland's security police made the life of pressmen a burden. To such length did they carry safety measures, and no one who hadn't very good business to be there was on the airport as the plane arrived with Sir Anthony Eden. Much of the credit was his that this long-anticipated discussion at the summit was now about to take place. Members of the British party, Lady Eden included, heard Sir Anthony prophesy success. At least you may be sure that our, our delegation will not be slow to seize any opportunity to promote the cause of peace with which Geneva will ever be associated and with which I pray that this conference will be linked in history too. Thank you. The French Prime Minister, Monsieur Faure, also sounded a note of reasonable optimism. Que cette conférence ait lieu sous ce ciel. Mr. Eisenhower said he once came to Europe with armed forces. This time, I come armed with something uh, far more powerful, the goodwill of America to see whether uh, it is not possible to find some road that will lead all mankind into a more tranquil, better, fuller way of life. I thank you very much. Perhaps it was the Russians who excited most interest, for not long ago, Marshal Bulganin and his top-level colleagues could not have been persuaded into conference with the Western powers. So at the Palace of Nations, it was one of the great events of modern times when the conference began. Realized now was the vision of Sir Winston Churchill two years ago, talks at top level. The Russians had come out of their Moscow shell to sit round the table with the Americans, with whom not so long ago, they were not the best of friends. Presiding at the opening session was Mr. Eisenhower. His genius for getting on with other peoples showed itself when he was wartime's supreme commander. But Monsieur Faure and certainly Sir Anthony Eden and we all hope the Russians realize that now we perish or survive together. May history say that permanent world peace was born at this conference in Geneva.